So just like you, I tend to spend way too much time online looking at guitars and different things that I could theoretically buy and how I would use them and all of this stuff. But I just wanted to share some thoughts on gear and gear acquisition syndrome because recently my fiance and I went on a trip down to New York and ironically I gave myself permission on this trip, you know, if you find a guitar you really like maybe you can buy it because it's in New York, it's this fun thing, you haven't bought any guitars in a while, da 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 And I went, and we went to countless guitar stores, and I tried probably 50 guitars that on paper should have been really cool and I should have liked, and I found this really miraculous thing that I actually didn't really like any of them enough to spend the money on them, which to me was crazy. And it also made me appreciate, you know, all of the gear that I actually do have and use here at home. And it really made me think about all of my experiences with gear and guitars and all of these things and how easy it can be to get into this mindset of, you know, like I just need that one extra thing and then then I can write my album or I just need that one extra thing and then and then I'll I'll, I'll try to put a band together or uh, I just need that one extra thing and then th then I'll be able to do this thing that's been in my head and honestly um, it's all it's all total BS uh, and I think a lot of us actually know that deep down on the inside I don't know um, about you guys but I've had experiences where I've purchased a new piece of gear and after you know the first couple days of elation you go that's it and there's this kind of realization that it really didn't change anything that much more for you and to me a lot of the time what I've found with experiences with pedals and guitars and amps anytime I'm chasing something that's very particular um, sound wise really the the answer is kind of in in here uh, and in here and in here where uh, it's kind of the cliche that tone is in the hands, but in my experience, it really actually is. Like uh, here, I mean, if I, if I had a say in the matter, pretty much the only guitar I'd ever play, likely, would be my Kennel JK Archtop, which I custom ordered and got made so that it's literally everything that I like in a guitar. I absolutely adore this guitar. You don't see it very much on the channel because it has a blank fretboard. And one thing I learned very early in my YouTube journey is that people like dots on the fretboard or markers of some kind so that they can tell kind of where you are. But this is my favorite guitar in the universe. Anytime I pick it up, it feels like home. Uh, it feels and sounds and responds exactly the way that I want it to. But also a big part of that is probably because this is the guitar out of all of my guitars that I've spent the most time playing. So I know how it responds. So even if you don't have your absolute dream guitar, um, which again, I'm fortunate that I, I do own this and I, I won't ever say, like you could say, oh, it's easy for you to say gear doesn't matter, you have a custom order guitar. 100%, you can give me that flack. But even if you're not playing a beautiful custom guitar, the one that you've spent the most time on and you know how to pull out certain responses from uh, is going to be a really, really wonderful instrument for you rather than uh, chasing all of these perfect things and these ideals that may or may not live up to their expectation. Now, when I teach and when I play non-jazz gigs, this Stratocaster is often the guitar that I bring. Um, it's been very heavily modified. There's videos all about it on my channel uh, if you're curious. But this guitar is basically my workhorse to do anything and everything that a guitar could need to do. Um, and then back home in, uh, or not home anymore, but back in my old home of Vancouver where I still go two or three times a year, and play some gigs. I have a hundred dollar Walmart guitar. The brand is Rocker Music Tools that I left over there and it's a Strat copy and it's HSS. Um, and the reason that I left that guitar in Vancouver for when I'm back for gigs, it currently lives at my fiance's parents house. Um, but the reason I left that guitar is because it has a really fat neck which is something that I really appreciate in guitars and I really like. Um, and it's really an interesting thing anytime that I go back and have to play that guitar on gigs if, if I didn't bring one of my guitars from here um, and I play it and I still sound like me and I still like there's no real disconnect like maybe I'll think like when I'm rolling up to the gig or doing sound check I'll be like oh this isn't my usual guitar and I'll be aware of that but once I actually start playing music it really doesn't affect me 
at all. I'm not thinking about my guitar. I'm thinking about the music. Um, and that is something that I think we could all stand to remind ourselves of every now and then, is that the guitar that we're playing, in most instances, is actually the absolute least important thing. The amp that you're playing through, you can get great sounds out of tons of amps. And that's another thing, again, that I've, I've learned as a touring musician and played through all kinds of things, um, is that I don't worry about it or really sweat it once I'm actually playing. We can get sounds out of all of it. We can get sounds out of any gear, and we're going to sound like us for better or for worse either way. So I just wanted to make this video because, again, I really actually was kind of looking for an excuse to buy a guitar, and I ended up not buying one because there wasn't something that jumped out at me and was something that I had to have. And I just wanted to share this because now that I've had this experience, which was quite eye-opening for me as someone who's always loved gear and loved buying new guitars and all of that, it really kind of struck me that I should really stop spending so much time perusing reverb and eBay listings and keep practicing and actually playing the guitar. Because that, at the end of the day, is the thing that really matters, rather than what kind of vintage pickup you have, or what kind of bridge you installed, or whether you, you know, put a tone block in your Strat and it's completely changed the sustain. Uh, I think we are actually in control of all of the most important aspects of doing this. And the guitars and the amps and the pedals, while they're wonderful, and again, I absolutely love them. I think guitars, pedals, picks, amps, I think all of it is so cool, and I'm really nerdy about it, but it's not the be all end all and it's not the important thing at the end of the day. So let me know if you've had any similar experiences or, or thoughts on this. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It truly helps me out more than you could know. If you want to support me or the channel, there's links to my Patreon down below where you can get early access to videos. You can also purchase my book or my course. It really helps me justify, you know, the personal time that I spend putting out these free educational videos. And again, of course, there's some good information in there. Uh, if you want to take a guitar lesson with me, I have a link to contact me down in the description as well. Love to work with you on whatever's troubling you on the guitar. And last but not least, got new videos coming out every single week, so I'd love to see you in the next one. And until I do, I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope you have some fun playing the guitar.